We got Miracle this adorable little pink hoodie that I put on her because it looks really cute. And then she did this thing where she was like, I am paralyzed by the hoodie. Why? Why did you? Why? Why did you get the cat a pink hoodie? Because she gets cold. Look, and it looks really cute on her. Come here, baby. No. Oh God, no! Don't, don't. Oh, we got to show the internet your little jacket. Come uh, here. What are you doing to the cat, Tara? She's like, God damn it. I'm like, God damn it. What are you doing to the cat, Tara? Give me your paw. Just give me your don't, don't tip over. It's not a thunder shirt. You know perfectly well you can move in this thing. What have you done? Look how cute she looks. <laughs> Dan is also rolling through her, her cat stroller because we're people that have a cat stroller. Y'all need Jesus. Well, no, see, the cat stroller actually came in really handy when we were at Dan's mom's because for some reason inside the cat stroller was the only place she would not growl and hiss at the two dogs and cat that live there. If she was in her little chariot, everything was cool. The second you took her out, <laughs> this is my baby. Can I take this thing off now? Yeah, I think she wants to take that off now. Yes, only wear it when Aunt Clara comes to visit. <laughs> I got that reference. <laughs> I understood that reference. Oh. Uh, give me, you gotta give me your paws. There we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. It's all over now. Oh, the torment is over. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's just tolerating shit at this point, so. Is your life constant despair? Yes. So just because I was away at MAGFest this past weekend does not mean the stupid stopped. The stupid rest for nobody. Stupid rest for no fucking person. I'm sure the stupid didn't rest because I went to deep redneck country, Missouri. How did how did Miracle put up with all the road trip shit? Actually, in the car, she was fine. Like she slept in my lap half the day and, oh, and slept in the back window sometimes and only fell out once. And wait, fell out of the car? No, fell out of the back window onto the back seat. Okay, because I'm about, oh, we only, the cat only fell out of the car once. It was fine. She did get pretty sick of the hotels. Like, by the last day, you could tell. She was just like, can we go home now? So yesterday, when we brought her home, she just walked around the house, like, grunting at everything. Just walking around in little circles, like, mer, mer. Hello, food ball. Hello, actual litter box. Yeah. All right, well... Let's get to the nonsense. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And we've got, we've got an amazing first story this week, which includes video. And, wow. This, everyone sent me this story. I think this one was like tailor made for me. Really? Yeah, just see, see the headline. Meanwhile, I'll queue up the video for this one. This comes to us from Brazil. Did you do this? Rum drunk monkey wields butcher knife holds off local authorities in rooftop standoff. <laughs> a monkey's bender ended badly in Brazil when it took to the rooftops with a large knife, holding law enforcement and firemen at bay. Capuchin monkey reportedly lives near a bar in Teixeira. Teixeira. Uh, where employees have grown acc accustomed to his presence. Thus, when he meandered in, no one thought much of it until he got his hands on some booze and a giant butcher knife. <laughs> Play that again. The bar staff's oversight ended with a monkey drinking some rum and taking the knife. The monkey, which at one point seemed to have been tamed, didn't handle his booze so well, quickly devolving from novelty pet to pushy primate. 
Chattering and swinging the sharp blade, he climbed to the roof where he hacked wildly about and yelled at anyone who got too close. <laughs> he was eventually taken to a wildlife reserve, but the story doesn't end there. Seems a precious fella got, uh, precocious fella got a taste for freedom and immediately set about making a mess of his new digs. We had to recapture him because he was causing problems and threatening children living near the reserve. Threatening children? Like with the knife? I, I guess with the knife. <laughs> There's so much. This week, well, kids. You know, it happens to child stars, and I guess <laughs> it happens to child animal stars too. Like, this monkey used to have a lucrative career on Friends. <laughs> And now the world has forgotten him. And he's a fucking violent drunk. Curious George got a little dark. Yeah. I think it's, it's got, he got, got a little dark. But why are you allowing the monkey to drink? Well, it said he got some hands. So, okay, so here's the thing. The story says the monkey got his hands on some booze. Like, yeah. oops, the monkey got a bottle of booze. No. Pretty confident. I have cat hair on my tongue. Sorry. Baby. Oh, okay. Bye. Pretty confident that a bunch of drunken idiots thought it would be hilarious to give the monkey some booze. And then when it didn't turn out the way they were hoping, well, shit, the monkey just got his hands on some booze. We don't know what happened. Bullshit. Bullshit. Someone was buying the fucking monkey shots. Exactly. It's like those people that fucking put bong water in their dog's dish. But it's it's all fun and games until the monkey gets a knife, children. Now you know what happens if he lets the monkeys out. <clears throat> now you know. Of course, if I just showed up at the bar at that point and there's a monkey ar running around with a fucking butcher knife screaming at people, I'd be thinking to myself, I love Brazil. If Tara needs something to replace Miracle, she could just place Dan on that stand. You want to come sit on the tower, baby? The feet can go fuck themselves. <laughs> I think he says no. I think, you think he said no? I think so. Either that or the, the next Planet of the Apes movie has a really low budget. Computer Ronin. Where's that Tarzan motherfucker? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a talk, I'm a talk to him. I'm a talk to the, the Jane shit was not cool, man. It's like not they just cool. Gave James, what's his name? James Franco, a GoPro. And we're like, find some monkeys. <laughs> Planet of the Apes. Do your thing, man. Don't. You're a film student, right? Don't, don't let the monkey drink. It's not cute. It's not fun. The monkey will get a fucking knife. You will get shanked See, by a monkey. That's what you would think. You would think, don't let the monkey drink because the monkey will get sick and it's bad for the monkey. Not, that, that but... monkey's an angry drunk <laughs> and will pull a fucking knife on you. The monkey will get a fucking knife. It's bad for you. Because how are you going to explain that shit to your HMO? And of course, everybody's referencing that nightmarish commercial from the Super Bowl. Puppy, baby, monkey. Yes, except Lula Mew is calling it drunky, stabby monkey. Uh, so, remember a few weeks ago we had this story. I'll put it up on the screen. I'll describe it for you. Remember the story we had where the guy stole a Walmart um, vest? Yes. And then walked out of the store with... And, and I swear to you at the time, you know what I said? You remember what we said? This could be a movement. People could just start going into Walmart with the vest and stealing shit. Tara? And then donating that money to Bernie Sanders? Thief dresses at Walmart, as Walmart worker, walks out the door with four HD TVs. Four. Chesterfield County, Virginia. A man dressed in a Walmart uniform stole four televisions from a store. According to police, the man was wearing a blue Walmart vest. As shown on surveillance video, he placed four HGTVs on a shopping cart and walked out of the store through an emergency exit. 
here's the thing. <laughs> I've worked a lot of retail. <laughs> Employees don't get to walk out of the store with merchandise either. No one said shit. Like, even if they think you work here, you're still walking out of the store with live merchandise. That's not a thing they let you do. Apparently they do, Tara. Apparently they do. Apparently Walmart, always low prices. Nobody gives a shit. You know why? Because everyone there is making fucking eight fifty an hour and hasn't had a break in three days. So no, they ran out of fucks two weeks ago. You, at this point, you kind of got it. These guys, this is like a crime ring now. <laughs> the, and it's genius because Walmart. This will finally be the undoing of Walmart. It won't be labor unions. It won't be bad media coverage. It'll just be st people stealing their vests and robbing them people fucking People walking out of the store with any goddamn thing because they have a Walmart vest. It's it's And that will be the thing that forces Walmart to pay their employees enough to give a fuck. <laughs> We're at this point where I can kind of understand it a little bit because if you're used to seeing something, it does, you know, a guy in a vest, Walmart, it doesn't seem out of the ordinary. They're yeah. walking around with merchandise. It just doesn't And occur. Walmarts are so big, I, I got to figure you see people you don't necessarily recognize. Like, if you just work in your department, there might be people you work with that you don't know. This is really so genius because it's so simple. Right. Simplicity. Yeah, it's it's pretty much... Like, this is not some Ocean's Eleven shit. No. <laughs> this is just get a vest... Walk into Walmart, walk out with shit. Nobody gonna stop you. You got and the, the thing best. Is most of these places don't make you return the uniform when you quit. Like, well, because you normally had to pay for the uniform, Tara. Like I, well, no. Like I worked at Starbucks for a while. They give you two aprons. When I left, I just gave my aprons to friends of mine that worked there and was like, "There, save you a day of laundry," because they don't take them back. Seriously? Well, no. I, I did retail. I had to buy my own fucking. And uh, it was bullshit. Pete, like so, someone posted on Facebook, they found a Starbucks apron in a Goodwill. That's what I did with my old Sephora uniform. I donated it to Goodwill because they didn't want that bag either. Like, so it's probably not that hard to get your hands on something like this. And I'm not saying you should do this. <laughs> We're definitely not, not recommending it. A lot of companies don't take the uniform back. Well, this is just kind of And weird. that's what always confuses me is I always think that like you're just going to let me take this uniform like what's to stop me? Nothing I'm apparently. Throwing it on and pretending I work there. It's it, this is one of those things where we we are we're trained to accept authority. Mhm. Mm and in the Walmart vest equal authority even though you, not, you got authority over fuck all but yeah. to the customer if you're wearing the vest you have authority. The customer's not going to say shit if they see a Walmart employee or what looks to be a Walmart employee just moving stuff around. And it's not it's like... The, the, it's the fact that nobody that worked there said anything because... They don't care yeah, either. They don't let employees walk out with live merchandise at most places. Have you ever been in a retail job where asking questions always ended up being a bad thing for you? Yes. If you ask a question, you'd get more work. You'd get someone paying more attention to every little fucking thing you were doing. Oh, that's so great that you noticed that problem. Now you're in charge of it. <sighs> so you, you learn really damn early. Not my fucking problem. Yeah, that's true. You I'm, didn't see shit. I'm not asking about this because I don't want to deal with the responsibility for it because you're not paying me enough. But you know they came down on their staff over that because that's the thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Anytime something does get stolen, it's everybody's ass. Even though it's not their fault because this and is And even the though you the loss prevention policies now are so labyrinthine that you have to jump through so many hoops lest a thief sue you for insulting them. Speaking of thieves... It, it was always my understanding when it came to stealing cars that the, the stealing a car was solely for the fact that you were going to get the parts out of it. That's what a car stealing because you can't just resell a stolen car. 
Not unless no, you ship you can, that like, shit overseas. Drive and... it. Well, yeah, but you can drive it for a little while. Then someone's going to figure out you're driving a stolen car, and then you're in trouble. If, if you're stealing cars, what you do Yeah, that's is, why you use that car to commit your crimes. Well, to commit a crime. But if you're stealing a car for stealing a car, what you're going to do with that is you take it to a chop shop. They, fuck, they take all the parts off. They sell it. You get some money back for it. That's how car thievery works. This, on the other hand, I don't think they really thought this shit through. Thieves pimp out Albuquerque's man man's ride after stealing it. Cars are stolen all the time in Albuquerque. If they ever turn up, many of them have been trashed or stripped of parts. But some thieves decided to give an Albuquerque man's stolen Jeep a glittery makeover. Josh Shelburne says he left his Jeep running in his downtown Albuquerque driveway last morning, pulled the Jeep and pulled in, the Jeep into my driveway to load up tools, left it running, went back outside for some coffee. 60 and 90 seconds later, it was gone. Shelburne said police called him just 48 hours. They found his Jeep, but it was unrecognizable. Within 48 hours, they ended up painting it a sparkly purple and welding a giant monstrosity of a bumper onto the front end of it. Like sparkly sparkly? Yeah, the, you know, the, the paint with those little flecks of sparkle oh, in it. Oh, okay. I was thinking like they literally covered this thing in glitter. And that would have been pretty hilarious. <laughs> People on the channel are going, oh my god, this Saints Row. Saints Row is not a LARP. Saints Row is not a LARP. <laughs> What is this game? This uh, Because this was the game with the giant penis bat. Yeah, it, Saints Row is kind of like Grand Theft Auto, only crazy. Grand Theft Auto, Auto, if you've dropped all the acid? Yes, exactly. This is a game that they a game. manufacture and that sell is a for game. money. That is, in fact, a game. I went into the wrong business. D these people spent their own time and money to essentially bedazzle a stolen car. <laughs> But that's weirdly great. But you're not going to be able to keep the car. They're going to find the car. I know, but in like an Andy Kaufman meets Andy Warhol kind of way. Like you're going a little too highbrow for our audience there, Tara. Like like punked meets pop art. <laughs> it's kind of beautiful. Because, yeah, you can have your card back, but now it's the gayest car in Albuquerque. <laughs> it's, why would, it's a, to, and I would drive the gayest Jeep in Albuquerque. Absolutely. Like, purple sparkly car? Send it to me. Why would you, for two days... You would, you, they labored for two days to repaint, and repainting a car is not a That's small process. endeavor. Yeah. That takes some fucking work. And then yeah. to put the giant ass bumper on the fucking thing. That's just, I think you're fundamentally failing to understand the car thievery process. It's like if Tara said, if you steal a car for a crime, Okay, or you steal a car for the parts to sell it. Mike is making a Mad Max reference in regard to why they put the giant bumper on. So now I'm just thinking of like a weird marriage between Mad Max and Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Like a Mardi Gras Mad Max or something. That needs to be the next Mad Max movie, like Mad Max Carnival. And they have all these insane cars, except they're sparkly. <laughs> I just, it, this is not how car thievery works. You don't get to keep the car. It's, ev it's stolen property. It's fucking evidence, you fucking fucks. <laughs> and we have <laughs> that poor man has to pay to get his car repainted <laughs> unless he really digs purple. I don't think the insurance is going to cover that. That's like a Breaking Bad subplot. <laughs> Like, is that not one of the many indignities they would have heaped upon sad sack Walter White before he came, like, infectious human waste Walter White? Yeah. Stole his car, repainted it sparkly purple. 
All right, we have even more car thievery, although this one, it... Look, I understand very, very intimately that buses do not run when you need them to, where you need them to. You have to plan your life around a bus schedule. If, you, if that's your way of getting around, the bus does not abide you, you abide the bus. I get that. This guy did not and in fact failed the entire concept of mass transit entirely. Metro transit mechanic charged with stealing unattended bus to get to work. Was he a bus driver? He's a bus mechanic. Metro Transit employee was charged Friday with felony motor theft for allegedly stealing an unattended commuter bus in order to make it to work on time. Gregory J. Jenrich, 31, was arrested after a short joyride toward the agency's South Garage, where he told police he works as a mechanic. The bus's licensed Metro Transit driver reported it stolen about 9.50 p.m. after returning from a scheduled break to find the vehicle missing. The driver parked on the uh, at the gas station. Gen uh, Jenrich admitted to taking advantage of her absence after locking his keys in his car, jumping in the empty driver's seat, and speeding away. So, you work for the Transit Authority. Yes. You stole a Transit Authority bus. Yes. And drove it to your job. Yes. At the Transit Authority. Yes. What were you going to tell them? This one tried to get away. I found it. <laughs> it was lost and I brought it back home. You're going to get caught. Yeah. If I understand, you need to get to work. I understand... You don't want to be late for work. But you know what? Sometimes shit happens. You know what's going to make you late for work? Jail. Jail. <laughs> Jail's going to make you very late for work. You know what else is going to make you late for work? Getting fired from your job. Getting. Oh, yeah. That that makes it really hard to get to work because it's not your work. Because you don't have work anymore. It's, it's not a ride share. No, it, it, the public bus is not a zip car. <laughs> it's not a fucking zip car. And just because you work for them doesn't make you an authorized operator of that no, vehicle. No. And I'm pretty sure he probably didn't stop for pickups. <laughs> Can you imagine the people on that route? Hey, fuck you, I'm late. <laughs> I'm going to work, I'm late. I thought he's at work. He's driving the bus. <laughs> like, I don't get it. Imagine that poor driver. Yeah, she's probably... Where is my dang bus? It... Uh... Did this happen? What? Where did this happen? St. Paul, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh. <laughs> you betcha. He told police he was concerned about getting to work on time. He did not have permission to drive or take the bus. You know what that means? Don't take the bus. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I work here. It's cool. No, no. Right. No. No, because I've worked lots of places. That doesn't mean you have the run of the place. That doesn't mean you do whatever the fuck you want. No. It's not like when I work computer repair. It's not like, oh, it's okay. I work here. I'm taking this computer with me. It's mine <laughs> I can now. I just take this one. This is mine now. No one can. No, no, that's not. Uh, so Speaking of the funny Minnesota accent that I attempted to do and failed, what was really fun about our trip to Missouri was listening to Dan's accent. Get, get thicker stronger, and stronger thicker. The we yep. I had I, like, the third day at his mom's house. He came in and he's like, all right, are you ready to go? And I'm like, am I ready to what? I would I would have the same when I would when I uh, ready to go. And I'm like, how many that word only has two letters? How can it have three syllables? <laughs> when I used to visit my family, I would have the exact <laughs> off from the couch. Yeah, well, I would too. When I when I visited my family, I have the exact same thing happen. People tell me they don't know I don't sound like I have any kind of accent, you know, but 
whenever I would head down to Charleston, my, my accent would just start coming out. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I was about that, but it just happened. Whenever well, I was he was parents. like, well, my mom's going to ask about your accent. And I'm like, I don't have a fucking accent. <laughs> now he keeps making my cousin Vinny jokes at me. Well, my, my biological clock is ticking. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, we're going to be down in like the middle of nowhere. There's uh, there's no Starbucks for like an hour and a half. And I went, oh, my God, what a fucking nightmare. Oh, well, we're we seem to be seeing the end, the end of the colder side of winter at this point. Yeah, because, you know, and it's warming and it's going to die. Well, yes, yeah. you do have an exit. No, I don't. The rest of y'all do. Y'all talk funny. So you just said y'all trying to. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> and it's it's nice to be seeing the end of the cold weather, because that means one of the problems of cold weather is going away, which is the frozen pipes. <laughs> That's always one you have to watch out for because yeah. if you're not from the north, if you're not from an area where this happens, water will freeze in your pipes. And when water freezes, I believe it expands mm-hmm. and the pipes don't. No. So your pipes can go boom. And then when the water starts melting, you have water everywhere. So you have to try to thaw your pipes. Now, normally, which people have lots of uh, different ways of handling this, they put insulation around the pipes. They leave the pipe running so that running water can't (laughs) freeze as easily. And then lots of people do this, and it's a very stupid thing to do. Or you do the thing I did last winter where a nice man buys you flowers and you forget to bring them in from your car. And the glass vase that they're in explodes overnight because the temperature drops. Yeah. And then you can't figure out how to deal with that. So you just leave one of your cup holders full of broken glass for a year until that nice man discovers it. And is like, you've just had a cup holder full of broken glass for a year. And I'm like, yeah, it's my theft karma system. Anybody steals my car, they're getting fucked up. But you didn't use a blowtorch, though. I did not, in fact, use a blowtorch. <laughs> New Ipswich fire sparked by homeowner using blowtorch on frozen pipes. A three-alarm house fire in New Ipswich on Wednesday was sparked by a homeowner using a blowtorch to thaw frozen pipes. Um, At least it wasn't a spider this time. <laughs> Fire Chief David Leal said that heavy smoke was coming from the eaves of the building. Firefighters tried to get inside, but the fire had collapsed the roof and Leal ordered everyone out because of the risk of collapse. Investigators determined the homeowner had been using a blowtorch to try to thaw pipes on the second floor when a piece of insulation fell down and caught fire. Whoa, whoa, what's that? Stop that. Leal said blowtorches should never be used to thaw pipes. There are safer methods. A hair dryer works fine. It takes a little longer, but at least you still have your house standing when your pipes get thawed. I can't believe this poor fire chief had to go, people, do not use a blowtorch to thaw your pipes. You- do you know what's in insulation? Death, pretty much. Yeah, not shit you want to inhale in a no. charred form. No, no, death, it, it's pretty much death. Your death. That's what they make it of. They make it out of solidified death there has never been an occurrence weirdly death keeps you warm there has never been an occurrence of any project i've ever been working on ever in my home where adding a blowtorch was a good idea well then what do they make them for that welding do you own a blowtorch Yes. Shit. Blowtorches are an outside toy, okay? (laughs) They're an outside toy. I mean, if you're making a lovely creme brulee. Well, yeah, but that's a little tiny handheld. You shouldn't have, like, you know, one that you're using on on your your freaking... And even creme brulee, that's kind of a bad idea. Let's be honest. Why? Creme brulee is delicious. Yes, but there's fire in a house. And I don't trust people. Our stove makes fire every time you turn it on. 
It's because you use gas because it's crazy. And I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to turn it to light first. And I just turn the dial and then walk away to do something and can't figure out why my food is still cold and the whole house smells like gas. I've nearly blown up our home probably a couple of times. Like, I really shouldn't be left unattended. <laughs> don't, don't. Blow, to, blow torches are an outside toy. <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty much outside toy. Just insulation. Burning insulation in your lungs. And you could tell this guy lived alone because there was no one to tell him, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop don't, doing that. Don't, no, no. Take that up. No, no. No, we're not using a blow. There was no second opinion on this. My first apartment out of college, we I lived with two friends and then downstairs from us lived four guys that had gone to the same college. So we knew them. Coldest weekend of the year, our pilot light went out in the basement. Like, we're all freezing and we just walk around and touch the radiators and realize there's no heat. So we go to the basement and check it out. Pilot lights out. One of the dudes downstairs is like, oh, that's cool. I'll relight it. And we're all like, N like everything went slow-mo. We're all like, no. <laughs> well, why not? I can fix it. And we're like, that thing's been pumping out gas for three days with nothing happening. Like, you're going to you're gonna kill us all. Sometimes you need a second opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you need a second fucking opinion. <laughs> Our last story tonight comes from Idaho. And the video for this is... Excuse me. Hey, Nash, if two potatoes are walking down the street, how do you know which one's a prostitute? I don't know, Tara. How do you know? It's the one that has Idaho stamped on the side. <laughs> Get it? Idaho? <laughs> do I have to entertain them again? Okay. Let me get Natasha. We get Ray. I guess I have sound now. I don't have to do a puppet show. Oh, hi, Grady. Grady, you can do the show with me. Come here. <whistles> Grady, come on. Take daddy's job. Nash walked away from me. <laughs> Even Mike's mad at me. That was bad, and you should feel bad. But I don't. <sighs> Regret nothing. So, this video is kind of amazing, and it's it's one of those just. Sometimes you should just give it up, give the shit up because you can take it a little bit too far. Let, let, let's play this video for everybody because holy shit. Um, didn't gonna just let people watch this here. Well, what? got a high speed. Yeah, this video <coughs> contains content that some viewers might find disturbing. All right, we have a high speed chase going on in Idaho. Um, you see the truck is weaving into the one median and then it comes back around and it flips. And if you watch really closely, the dude flies out of the car. And if you're asking why this is on the show here, you're about to see because after the dude flies out of the fucking car, he tries to run from the police. He tries to keep going. Spoiler. I mean, what do you do at that point? Turn yourself in? Spoiler. He does not get away. Oh, my God. He is. He's just staggering away. It's so sad. I I commend that, you know, I, I, I commend because I got to play that again because that's just amazing. He, I like did that thing where he flew around in the air like he was doing a cartwheel, but he wasn't. It was like, you, you should expect him to go, ah, hoo, hoo, hoo. You know, it's the goofy, there, oh, God, there he goes again. It just, 
Okay, first of all, seatbelts, everybody. Seatbelts. Seatbelts are important. Second of all, there's, you're not, you're not getting away. Just accept your fate at that point. <laughs> Witness me? Oh, we are. We're witnessing you. You're not shiny in chrome so much as, you know. How are you getting up? Like, do you just not, does the adrenaline just not allow you to know that your spine is broken? Oh, he was fine, actually. Are you just not yet aware that you're fucking paralyzed? No, no, no. This is the kind of amazing thing. He was dazed, but he was fine. How are you fine? Um, uh, the, the story comes to us because a state, a uh, couple of uh, passersby, Jason Henley and his wife, Dorothy, they, uh, they received a plaque for helping the police capture the guy. Just some dude? Yeah. Um, according to the, to the uh, news release at the time of the incident, uh, the officer suffered a leg injury after his car was rammed by the driver. Oh, he's um, not just some dude. He's a Marine. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, the driver was charged with three felonies, battery of an officer, fleeing police, and possession of meth. And mutant powers? I don't know. I think he went, yeah, I, I kind of think he did the whole go limp thing and he was fine, but. Like, if we check that guy for adamantium? <laughs> But you know what? If if you survive that sort of, if you roll your truck and you literally fly out of the vehicle and land and you are not dead. Yeah, like just call it a day. You've won. You win. You might be going to jail, but you win. Try yeah, like unfortunately, your prize is a one-way ticket to jail, but you've won. This is like doubling down on a bad hand in blackjack <laughs> you don't say hit me again. you just you take your 18 and you let it ride yeah you don't double double down don't double down i be god damn but i mean points for balls man <laughs> no just get up and keep running especially considering he ran right back into the highway i know run off into the Grass. Don't run onto the highway. This. You survived the crash. You're not going to survive getting run over. I mean, my God. This is not going to make it in Mad Max Super Gay Fury Road. <laughs> yeah, I guess. All right. The, the first thing we learned this week is uh, don't double down. Don't double down. When life hands you a miracle, don't go, is that all? You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to stagger away. And you got to know when to just lie down. <laughs> just lie the fuck down. You got to lie the fuck down. We've learned that blowtorches are an outside toy. <laughs> and that Nash hates creme brulee. I just, I, I, I love that I have Philistine. to, I love that I have to couch it in those terms. Blowtorches are an outside toy. Because that's the only thing everybody understands. I don't even know what you would legitimately use a blowtorch for. Like, what is its actual function in the home? In the home? Plumbing. Plumbing? Yes, but it's for welding. Sweating. Sweating pipe? How is that not the same as what this idiot did? Huh? How is that not the same as what this idiot did? Are we talking about blowtorch or are we talking about an acetylene torch? Is that it's a blowtorch. I don't know. Okay. Great. One is small and one you would use for the creme brulee. The other one involves a pretty big gigantic tank. <sighs> We don't own a thing that involves a great big gigantic tank, do we? Not yet. <laughs> I've really enjoyed my time on the show. <laughs> One of us is clearly going to burn this house down. Either I, because I can't use the fucking stove, or him, because he thinks he's Tony Stark, but really he's 
fucking Rube Goldberg. <sighs> to be fair, you, those, you were going to die. To be fire. fair, all of Rube Goldberg's devices did, in theory, work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've learned that if you're late for work. Don't stealing the city bus is not a good option. Yeah, stealing the city bus is going to make you a whole lot later, especially if you work for the city bus. We've learned that if you steal a car, you need to you either use it for a crime or you part that shit out. You don't pimp someone else's ride. That's just stupid. You don't get to keep the car. Pimp a ride you're going to get to keep. We've learned Walmart don't give a fuck. Nobody uh, who works in the Walmart gives anything resembling a fuck. They're going to be... Single, smiley face, reduced price fuck do they give. They're going to be bankrupt by the end of the year if this shit keeps happening. And finally, we've learned do not give the monkey alcohol. <laughs> and access to cutlery. <laughs> you might think, oh, this will be hilarious. But it won't. It won't. It won't. You're going to end up with a knife in your kidney and a monkey peeing on your head. 